Take a deep breath. I've been meditating all day. My name is Tosh. This is Tosh Talks. I am the book buyer for Book Soup in West Hollywood um, on the Sunset Strip. And um, we just got this in quite recently. And this is actually something a little bit more personal than my other Tosh Talk shows. Um, this is a book by Charles Britton, West and South. And um, I have to be honest with you, the person on this cover is somebody very, very close to me, a woman very dear to my heart, my mother. It's always great to have your mom on, on a cover of a book that you sell at your bookstore, that you work at, and um, it's a total conversation starter, believe me. But uh, Charles Britton, let me give you a little history. Charles Britton is a, was, well, Charles passed away about, uh, about two months ago, unfortunately, before this book came out. But he was alive putting the book together with uh, Lorraine Wilde and Christine McKenna, who did a fantastic editing and design job for this book. This book is um, stunningly beautiful. And um, what's fascinating, well, of course it's fascinating. Um, Charles was a very close friend of my parents. Uh, my mom's name is Shirley Berman, and my father uh, is Wallace Berman, who was a, uh, a, a well-known artist in America. And Charles was very close to my dad and mom and their social circle at the time. And Charles pretty much in Los Angeles, as well in San Francisco, pretty much documented uh, uh, my parents and me our lives in a very, uh, during the 50s and early 60s, mostly in the 50s. And um, it's a fascinating document because it's sort of part of the whole beat thing that's happening. If you're a square, it's beatnik. If you're hip, it's beats. So we'll call it, we'll call it the beats movement. And of course, we know about Kerouac and Ginsburg and Gregory Corso, but there's also a lot of other people involved in the beat scene at the time. Um, all outcasts of sorts because of the culture, but uh, nevertheless, uh, all these series of outcasts of, of American culture, uh, Charles pretty much capture this moment, this time, this place. That was my dad's world. And Charles was always attracted, I think, to the world that's not accepted in a way, um, either by location or by a group of individuals, and then got into the civil rights movement quite heavily in the uh, early 60s to the late 60s. And he photographed a lot of uh, demonstrations that took place uh, in, uh, in uh, all over the country. But I just want to show you some of the images of this exquisite book. And also, if you're interested in Los Angeles history, this book is also essential because it documents Venice, California quite heavily. And we know Venice today is what it is, but Venice at the one time looked like this which is quite remarkable. This is actually a great photograph. And um, yeah, it's hard to believe this is actually Venice. But, but also, Venice always, to me, always had a scary vibe about it. As a child, I was scared to death of Venice because of this sort of carnival feeling. And Orson Welles shot Touch of Evil in Venice, California, pretending it's Tijuana. To me, I would never think it was Tijuana, but it was always Venice, California, which was off, at that time, to me, a very scary place. It had a sort of violent, sort of undertow of sort of um, darkness involved. And um, Charles, in the beginning of the book, pretty much documents Venice in its various uh, disguises and its various uh, formats. And uh, there's a great double spread here of, uh, of some street scenes of Venice. But then, um, and I also remember all these uh, oil drills in Venice. They were like pumping for oil on a 24-7 basis in this time. And uh, I remember the sound going day and night. And it's sort of an eerie, uh, almost like a David Lynchian type of soundtrack that you hear <laughs> in life in Venice 1950s. And Venice at that time was also famous for, uh, again, like the beach scene. A lot of writers, a lot of artists lived in Venice because the rent was cheap. And it was by the beach. The weather is nice. And here's a nice little portrait of the whole family here, of my family. My father with the beard, my mom there, and the little striped shirt little thing right there, if you can see it, is uh, actually Tosh, of Tosh Talks. And we're walking down Venice, and, um, and 
what happened, my father moved up to the north, well, my parents moved to Northern California, to Larkspur, and my dad decided, this is a long story, I'm going to make it very short, and if you want to get more into depth, you should just get the book or read The Seminar Culture, which is a great book in itself about my dad and his world. But this is my dad's gallery that he started called the Seminar Gallery. If you notice, it's pretty much of a rotten building structure. Hardly any walls, hardly any floors, no ceiling. Open only when the weather is good. And this was Charles Britton's first exhibit. So it's, so it's Charles Britton photographing his first exhibit at the, uh, the, at the gallery. And here's what the interior look of the gallery here, if you can look at it, see it here. Probably the most minimal of minimal, minimal galleries of all minimal time of minimal history. And never repeated, I don't think. And um, so there's lots of images of my dad here of all sorts. And, um, and also Charles really photographed a lot of women. And he had a really sensual aspect at looking at women, I think. I think he did amazing photographs of, of women, including my mom, of course. And I'll show that to you in a second. But uh, here's a favorite of mine. This is actually a, uh, almost like a fashion shoot thing up here. This is an incredible photograph. And the back is all like text of like street names in Los Angeles. So you got the most ultimate Los Angeles fashion shoot ever. And um, all these personalities in this book is actually fascinating in itself. And uh, all artists like Jan Altoon, fantastic painter, Artie Richard, another great uh, artist of that time. There's a portrait of my father with Salem cigarettes. My dad never actually smoked. I presume it's my mother's cigarettes, but we'll, you know, photography never lies. So it really, you're going to have, in this book, you're really going to, you're getting like an insider's view of very much of a bohemian lifestyle. And it was like uh, Artie Richard right here was a great painter, incredible personality. Somebody I know, I knew as a child. He passed away many years ago, unfortunately. Here's a sort of beautiful shot of my mother, I believe, wearing my uncle's clothing. My uncle was a uh, Donald Moran, who is now a hairdresser, was a clothes designer at that time. And I think this is my mom modeling uh, my uncle's clothes. And uh, this is actually an interesting person. This is Anita O'Day, who's Charles Britton's uh, neighbor. Anita O'Day was a great, 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 great jazz singer of the 50s and the 60s. Uh, very dramatic life. Heroin was involved, and uh, hard narcotics, of course, and she was just a fascinating uh, personality and woman. I think it's a great portrait. And here's an image of uh, my dad with his best friend at the time, Dean Stockwell, the actor and artist. And uh, it's a lovely portrait of both of them. All the portraits are kind of casual, but very sort of composed perfectly. And then we get back to Venice, California again. Uh, of, uh, of the oil drills, which is my memory of Venice. When I go to Venice now, you don't see any of this, but it's kind of amazing how Venice changed over the years. I think in the 60s, it started developing. I think money came in and started, uh, it started to develop more. Yeah, it's fascinating. And um, these are sort of like Venice kids running around amok and doing what Venice kids do, walking in buildings through windows, blah, 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 blah. Kids will be kids. And uh, this is kind of interesting. It's sort of like outside of an outhouse with the toilet with a lot of uh, women pinup, girl pinups all around it. Sort of the men's dream place, I guess. Toilet and then pinup of women. Always a great combination for the interior, bathroom interior. And uh, here's sort of a double spread of my mom. Quite nice. And of course, I'm showing this to you over, the, you know, over another medium, and it's not, you know, it's not really a great way of showing a book of photographs. You have to actually have to see this book to really appreciate it. Here's the ultimate bohemian living room. You got your record, you got your, uh, your, you got your records, you got your record player, you got your uh, uh, coffee cups, your, 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 your plastic glasses, which were definitely full of wine before, ashtrays full of cigarette butts. This is sort of the modern life in 1950s. Beautiful interior. Oh, food. Mm. Something with raisins or berries or dessert of some sort. And Fancy Freeze, one of the records, which is a Broadway musical. And here's my father um, dancing at a party. A lot of parties, a lot of big social life at that time. 
He was a big mega dancer, actually. And um, so, so, uh, so the book goes into the bohemian life. Here's another interesting photograph of my mother. And uh, then it goes right into, emerges into um, street demonstrations of all sorts. Um, Here we have people, uh, a, a civil rights uh, 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 demonstration over here. And then over here, you have the American Nazi Party demonstrating against the uh, civil rights people. And uh, Charles actually you know, risked his life taking these photographs uh, because um, often he would get uh, beaten up by the police uh, and was arrested uh, numerous times and his camera smashed and so forth and so forth. So he's, Charles is an incredibly brave person to document this time where very few people were documenting movement, the black American movement, the civil rights movement. And, um, and a lot of times there's like a lot of the dem you know, demonstrators being pulled away from the line. Probably not treated that well, I presume. Here's Martin Luther King at a communist training school. This is sort of a right wing propaganda thing. I didn't know there was a communist training school. I'll have to go to one now, actually. That's not too bad. And um, so anyway, so the second part of the book is totally documenting uh, the Civil Rights Movement, the Black Panthers. So this book goes from American Beats, San Francisco, Los Angeles, to the Civil Rights Movement. And it moves effortlessly from one subject matter to another. Or perhaps it is the same subject matter. Here's a. a the Office of the Black Panthers, obviously after a police raid, and uh, the photograph speaks volumes on how how the world saw the Black Panthers and, and the Black Civil Rights Movement, which was, I think, a very scary place and time, um, and these people are actually incredibly brave and beautiful in what they were doing. And this is a beautiful portrait of Catherine uh, Cleaver, uh, incredibly stylish, incredibly beautiful woman. And this is pretty much the Charles Britton book. And uh, West and South, it's, uh, it's probably the, it is the biggest Charles Britton book that came out. There was a small one that came out sometime about 10 years ago. But this is the one to get. We have it at Book Soup. I strongly recommend it, of course. Family Ties, of course. But it's an incredible documentation of the American Beat Movement as well as the Civil Rights Movement. And uh, we can thank the late, great Charles Britton for capturing all that in this beautiful book. Thank you.